once again, thank you so much for joining us for this very uh, special brief on Friday. We thank God that we are able to come to you live from our house. We bless God that uh, the Holy Spirit is going to explode in your life even as we feel him in this house and your life will be different from today. A few weeks I said, I threw a prophetic word that there is a sound from heaven that is coming to usher in a new season. When we were here on Friday, that is for our midweek service, I give a prophetic word concerning that sound. I'm going to go a little bit farther on the same, but in the meantime, let's bow our heads down and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for this very special day that you have given us so that we can hear from heaven and so that the Holy Ghost can impart something in our lives because of the new season that we are just about to experience. We thank you for the move of the Holy Ghost that has started all over the world to usher in the harvest. We bless you, our God, because we are part of it. Thank you, even as you speak to us in Jesus' name. Now, on Wednesday, I remember to have spoken to you a prophetic word concerning the prophetic war drums that are sounding from heaven. Call it a trumpet, uh, call it a war drum, a war cry, whatever you want to call it, listen to this. It is so vital for us to move with heaven. When we do different things, other than what heaven is doing, we miss it. In the same way, we are going into very intensive spiritual warfare in the new era, in the new season, immediately after this coronavirus thing, because this one is a cloud that is just passing away. But it's going to be a bit different, like I said on Wednesday. But let me go and explain to you what I mean that by saying it will be different. The Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 149, beginning from verse 4, For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Get that. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. I am interested in verse 6. May the high praises of God be in their mouth and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and the punishment on the peoples, to bind the kings with the pharaohs and their nobles with the shackles of iron. In simple terms, high praises, the sword, the double-edged sword in the mouth to exercise authority. That's, that's simple. High praises. I want to go back to where we started with the spiritual warfare and where we, so that we can see where we are right now. We started when we had no weapons. We did not know anything about spiritual warfare. We did not know anything about our weapons. We were like the children of Israel in 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 19, when in the land of Israel, nobody had a weapon. 
other than the king that saw and Jonathan only two people it was a difficult time and the philistines would do anything they wanted to do with them listen to this the bible says during the days of ignorance god overlooked but now knowledge about we had no weapons then god gave us what i would call blacksmith anointing the land of israel did not have weapons during the time of Saul that we are seeing because there was no blacksmith god gave us the blacksmith anointing how did he give us when he brought us to see the importance of the word of god in our mouth this is in ephesians 6 verse 18 the sword of the spirit which is the word of god in our mouth as a weapon and if you can remember in the 70s and of course early 80s the word movement you know the the, the faith movement so called was very prevalent god was bringing this blacksmith anointing so that we can have the sword of the spirit which is the word of god in our mouth what have i said when we the, the issue of when the teachings about the spiritual warfare came they met us with no weapons we did not know how to use the word of god how to stand on the word of god god brought the black blacksmith anointing and we were able to see the value of the sword of the spirit which is the word of god doing doing warfare but that was not all god now came later and this is especially in the 90s and part of 2000 he came and brought us what i would call the zerubbabel anointing you remember when zerubbabel went to war had to go to war he brought in the priests with their musical instruments and they brought praise in the war front and if you can remember there was a lot concerning the revival or may i say the restoration of praise and worship in the house of God those of you who are bait of dinosaurs in the house of God you remember there was a time a keyboard would not be accommodated in the church but much later or may i say all that we were using were our hands and the drums you know but when when the zerubbabel anointing came into the house keyboard keyboards guitars i mean all kinds of instruments were brought in the house of god god was introducing unto us or he was bringing to us the zerubbabel anointing that takes praise and worship right into the war front and i want to remind you at the you know i want to remind you this when god got the children of israel out of egypt this is what he had to say he told moses go and tell pharaoh to release my people so that they can go and worship me in the desert What am I talking about? The children of Israel knew God or related to God on the basis of their experience, the miracles that he had done. That's why you find, you know, Miriam 
is going to thank God and bless him a lot with the tambourine and he's leading everybody into praise. But listen, that's 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 just a level whereby they are worshiping, they are praising God because of what they had done. It was different with Moses. Moses had met God in the desert. In, the, in you know in in the mid when he was he lived in Midian and he knew that you know he knew God personally and he wanted the children of Israel to know this God so that they they would not have temporary praise and worship after God has done a miracle but it will be something continual that didn't go or did not last now it will last why there was a time we did not have weapons God God brought in the blacksmith anointing and we got the importance of having the sword of the spirit which is the word of God in our mouth when we do warfare now Zerubbabel anointing came and when the Zerubbabel anointing came praise was taken to the war front praise and worship But now we are in a different season. Where are we? There is going to be the restoration of the tabernacle of David which had worship 24 hours a day. Why? We would need two things. Not just the praises, but high praises that zero on the finished work of Jesus listen to this the the high praises will zero on two things the greatness of our god and the finished work of Jesus i'll say that again the greatness of our god and if you want to see that That's what David concludes with in Psalm 150. Listen to this. The last day warfare that will bring in the harvest. I'll say that again. That will make sure that the enemy does not hinder the harvest of souls and the harvest of nations. that authority listen to this that authority will be exercised by people that are going to have high praises in their mouth that come from the greatness of our God and the finished work of Jesus the shout of a king i'll say that again the shout of a king I'll say it a third time the shout of a king these are the kind of people that are going to exercise authority over the nations they are going to pull down every stronghold they are going to stop every work of the evil one but I'm going to say that again it's not going to be on the level of just praises it's not just going to be on the level of sword sword of the spirit the word of god just there it's not going to be on that level and it's not going to be on the level of religion which has no which does not know anything about spiritual warfare it's going to be on the level of high praises together with the sword of the spirit that double edged sword It's going to be on that level. And I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus for you that this anointing listen to this. This anointing that comes with the restoration of the tabernacle of David. This anointing for high praises and the sword of course in your mouth double edged sword that is you stand on the word and the hand of god you stand on the finished work of jesus and you stand on the greatness the sovereignty of your god 
over every circumstance, over every crisis, over every coronavirus, over every scandal, whatever it is, every work of the enemy, may you receive that anointing. I thank God for all of you who, have, who are tuned in from different parts of the world besides Kiambu and besides this nation. I want to promise you that this is just the beginning. I want to deal with this anointing that will go silencing every single power of the enemy. I want you to join me on Sunday at exactly 9 and again at 10.30 so that we can go on with this. This is the anointing being tapped right now. This is the anointing the prophets are talking about right now from the four corners of the earth. And this is what needs to be tapped. By the way, it's being tapped right now. I will talk more about it. I know God will richly bless you and he would do, he, I mean, you, you will be a part of this. You must be a part of this. You, that's why God is making you hear this, so that you are part of this. Those of you who are listening to us from, from Britain, God bless you like grace. God bless you and get you together with your Judah. Oh, that's interesting. Of course, Esther is there from Morocco. Thank you so much. Pastor Muchiri, we are just about to bow down and pray. Mary, we miss your praise. We miss your worship. Karaoke all the way from Evabagon. Bless you so much. Beryl, my daughter from Rongo. God bless you. The Kangeres, be blessed so much. Michael McCone. Glory be to God. Bless you. Alice, bless you so much. Esther from Dubai. Mary from Qatar. There are so, you are so many of you, including Bishop Nicholas from, from Narok. Bishop Sipora, bless you from Mombasa. We bless all of you in the name of the Lord. Continue sending your prayer requests. Let me pray right now that this anointing will start falling on you. The anointing for high praises. The anointing for that shout of the king. The anointing that just zeroes on the greatness of God, the sovereignty of our God, the finished work of Jesus Christ. It is finished. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, I want to bless you for your people. I thank you for the great move of the Holy Ghost that is right now blowing, starting to blow all over the earth. I want to bless you for our people because we are part of it. We are part of it. And I pray that this great outpouring of your anointing even as you restore the tabernacle of David of high praises and high worship will fall upon everyone that is listening, that will listen, everyone that is called by your name. I bless them in Jesus' name. Once again, please don't forget to tune in tomorrow at 5. And if you have youth, please give them you know, our, our um, app, give them our link. Please, please, tomorrow it will be it will be a blowout for the youth. Make sure that you are there. Again on Sunday, our children's service, that will be something else. Oh, it will be some it will bless your socks off. Be blessed even as we meet. Tomorrow at 5, we meet on Sunday. God bless you.